Welcome to the Tell Me More podcast presented by Major League Success. And uh, I'm super excited to have Thomas Hamrick with us today. Um, you. you know, we we got to know each other fairly well over the last year or so um, mm -hmm. through through the Avon Clubhouse. Um, you know, it's funny because every time I bring people on, I'm like, oh, we got to know each other through Clubhouse, even though we were uh, always social media friends. But I know. Um, mm -hmm. No, I, I appreciate you taking the time to to join to join the show and um, you know just to kind of share your story. I mean, tell me more is all about uh, agents and and people in the real estate space coming on, sharing their story of how they got started in the business and and kind of the 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 steps up to that. Um, and the whole goal is if there's someone out here listening to the show and and your story, if they can if they resonate with it in any way and just see that there is, you know, a different path to becoming successful in this business. You know, that's what, that's what this is all about. So Thomas, give us, give us a little breakdown of, of uh, kind of your brokerage, where you're currently at, and then we will dive into the, uh, the younger years, the growing up years. <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, definitely. Thank you for having me, John. I'm super excited to be here. I mean, shout out to Clubhouse. I mean, we were friends on Facebook. I don't know how many years. Yeah. And then I saw one day you made a post like, there's this new app called Clubhouse. I'm like, well, I've heard of that. Like, I want to be young and hip still. So I was like, <laughs> let's, do it. let's check it out. So yeah, definitely, you know, it's been a whirlwind of, you know, 14 months now since we started last January. But yeah, excited to be here. But yeah, now, so, you know, I guess we'll start current and then kind of just go backwards is what it sounds like. Um, yeah. Currently, I am a real estate agent here in Columbus, Ohio. So I co-lead a team of six agents, including myself, so me and five others. Um, I am at Corcoran Global Living. So that is a it's a newer brokerage here in town. They just came here in October. So um, they started on the West Coast and um, they're a franchise of the Corcoran Group. So I joined just back in January, um, January 11th, so almost three months now. So yeah, that's what I'm up to now for sure. Awesome. Well, so I always like to start with everyone's uh, younger years because I'm a big believer that a lot of uh, of how we grow up and some of those experiences factor into our real estate business. Mm -hmm. You know, like I had Thomas uh, Thomas Tom connect on, um, and you know, one of his first jobs was working at a gas station and figuring out, you know, when he was pumping gas, how to upsell some of the other things that has then led to, to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, him helping develop his sales skills in, in the real estate space. So, um, growing up, what, what was, what was it like? Um, did you play sports? Did you, were you always kind of like an, an entrepreneur? Did you like sales? Um, kind of what was some of your, your upbringing? Um, I always loved sales growing up, but actually one of the first things I wanted to do was become a pharmacist. Okay. <laughs> so when I was 14 years old, I think I went and shadowed a pharmacist and for like, I don't know, two or three weeks, I was at the Target Pharmacy over in Reynoldsburg and I was over there and I hated it. It was like, <laughs> oh, this is not the life for me. It's something I had wanted to do for like four years, but I never like other than, you know, just looking at it online or like talking to some some family friends that I knew. Um, that was the only experience I had. And then I did that and I was like, I can't do this. It was, you know, standing behind a counter for 13 hours, 12 hours and just sliding pills across this thing and putting them into a bottle. Like I was like, this is not the life for me. I mean, I love that you're able to talk to people. Talking to people has always been a passion of mine. But that was actually my, um, my first dream. Um, and then I then tried shadowing a dentist so i tried that for a little bit decided that wasn't for me either um i grew up in the real estate world so it was definitely something that wasn't unfamiliar to me but it was i always said like oh i'm never gonna do that like that's not for me like i don't want to do that i want like you know consistent income i want something that makes a lot of money i want you know which you know real estate does but i wanted something that was consistent and, like it was tried and true and proven that i would right. that Money I would get, and we, as we know, our commissions are never guaranteed in this business. You know, we're 1099, we're not W2. So I, when I finally got to the real estate dream, it definitely I tried a few others at first, but um, yeah, I grew up in the business, so 
what were you gonna say? What what I guess at 14, what made you want to be a pharmacist? Like what was it just like the medicine side? Was it you like I don't know. I, I don't think most 14 year olds are like pharmacy. That's what I want to do. I don't know. At least I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm definitely an odd one out. Um for sure. So I always loved science. Science was one of my, you know, favorite subjects in school. And then when I got to an older age, you know, in your high school, it's not just called science anymore. You're in biology or you're in chemistry. And I loved chemistry. So that was honestly the year that I decided I was like, well, like maybe I want to go into this. I had spoke with my chemistry professor. She's I think you'd be great at it. She's like, you're awesome at like everything we do in here. I was like, well, let's check it out. So I checked it out. I was like, this is not for me. And then I was like, science is not for me. I can't do science anymore after I tried the dentist thing. And so when I had graduated high school, I was like, okay, business. I know I want to do business. So I went for my marketing degree. And I always loved marketing. I love social media. I love talking to people. But I mean, so many people my age love social media. And once I started to explore that world a little bit more, I decided it wasn't for me. But marketing is is where I knew I wanted to be. So when I got to college, which maybe I'm jumping the gun here in the podcast, but when I got to college, um, marketing is where is where I landed. So did you kind of push the other way because you saw, I know you said you kind of wanted consistency and some pay and things. Um, growing up in the business, I don't, I mean, obviously I didn't grow up in the business, but I can't imagine what that would be like, you know, seeing your parents in it. And obviously, you know, <clears throat> I'm sure there was maybe some, like, did they kind of push you to become a real estate agent or they let you kind of self-discover and, and do your own thing? Um, my mom actually pushed me the opposite direction. <laughs> I mean, I, growing up, you know, in a house where my mom was a real estate agent, you know, she was a top agent, has been for years. Um, I got to, I get to see the non glamorous side of real estate. Like I got to see the the non HGTV, which I know. I mean, a lot of I think a reason a lot of people get in this industry is they they think it's glamorous. They think it's just showing houses. They think it's easy. Yeah. I saw the hard side. And I saw it early, and I saw it growing up. And you know, it was never something. It was never something my mom necessarily wanted me to be a part of. She wanted me to, and if I wanted to, eventually she wanted me there. But she wanted me to explore other options at first. So she definitely, you know, pushed me to go to college and, you know, pushed me to explore other things. And I did. And I was happy to. But when I had gone to college in marketing, I I wanted to go into the corporate world. And my advisor at the time, my mentor said, well, you need you need a background in sales if you want to, like, you know, just go straight into the corporate world. And I was like, well, I can get a sales job. I know where I know where to, where to do that. So I had finished my first year of college and I got my real estate license. And so honestly, I was the student realtor at Capital University for years. I was that was my my thing. Like there was there was no realtor that was a college student. Like that I was my thing for so many years. I was the young agent. I was 19 years old. And now, you know, I'm 24 now and I see other agents who are now, I, young has always been my thing. And I, I'm not young as as I used to be anywhere. I'm 24. And there's people who are 18, 19 who are getting into it now. And yeah. honestly, I'm I'm proud of them. I think it's just absolutely amazing. Starting young in this industry is definitely not normal. I know that for sure. It's and, not normal. And it's even, it's hard. I mean, it's it's a little harder. Um, like we have a we have a an agent who just joined us right out of high school, um, mm -hmm. got licensed at 18, and you know, I was 22 when I got started, I just, I had just graduated and, and then got into the business. And I was one of those of the HGD, HGTV was just becoming popular. And, uh, in 2011 and all of the flipping shows, I'm like, man, if they can, they're making $80,000 a flip. Like, Oh, mm -hmm. I got in because I wanted to learn the flip and the, and the investment side. But, uh, I figured I should know some sales and real estate. Um, now I've done some flips and that hasn't been my main focus. The main focus has been the sales and, and the real estate side, but, yeah, I mean, at such a young age, it's even harder because, and I'm sure you got this and I got it. Are you even old enough to, oh, to sell yeah. real estate and to get someone that's in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s to trust, you know, mm -hmm. an 18 to 22 year old or 24 year old or whatever the case may be? Like now you have the experience of, of five years, but mm -hmm. I know when I got started, I didn't know anything about real estate and I didn't know anything about 
houses. Like I didn't know stuff about furnaces or roofs or, you know, any of that stuff. So uh, I'm sure it was definitely more of a challenge, you know, at 18, 19 years old. Oh, no, I completely agree. It was my biggest obstacle, like 100%. Like I, I knew growing up, I knew a lot of things that younger agents didn't know, like, I, you know, how to write a contract, like all that, you know, the stuff that you learn. Yeah. yeah the, the classes were easy for me because I knew all of that. And, you know, if I ever did have a question, my mom was right there. Like I could go to her, you know, 18, 19 years old, be like, hey, like, I remember my first listing, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't answer a phone call. I was afraid. I'd let everything go to voicemail. I hoped they would, you know, leave a voicemail and like hint at what their questions were. And then I would, I would go to my mom and be like, what does this mean? Like, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about, what they're talking about. And so I, like for my, probably my first two listings, like I just, I didn't answer the phone. I called them back immediately, but I let them leave a voicemail first and yeah. then I figure out, cause I, I didn't know anything. And so much of this job is on the job learning. It's training what, once you have your license. Um, cause there is, you, you can always be learning in this business. There's so many things to learn. The learning never stops. And I think that's a super important characteristic to have as a successful agent is to always have that mindset to learn. And that's so important. But being young, that was my hardest obstacle. I mean, for sure. Um, I would get all the time, like, why should I trust you to yeah. help me buy a house? And for the first year, I was like, I don't know. Like, yeah. I don't know why you should. So um, it, it was definitely hard to overcome. I mean, once you get that first person to trust you, that's a great feeling. Um, then you get one under your belt and then, you know, you can use that to then get the next one. And then you have two under your belt. And then it, after you get more and more, it gets easier. It gets easier. Um, you know, you know how to overcome those common, common questions, those obstacles. Well, you're so young. Like, how can I trust you? I'm like, well, here's why you can trust me because my last three sales, I've gotten, you know, the, my seller $50,000 over list price, you know, we're, we've broken records in the neighborhood. Here's my marketing strategy. Here's everything I can do for you. You know, all of that. And yeah, no, it was, it was definitely a, a very hard obstacle to overcome for sure. So, um, with that, I mean, what I did was I, and you were in the same situation cause you had obviously your mom and, and did she have a team at, at the time or was it just her? It was just her. So I we, yeah. it was created when I came, it was the two of us. So, yeah. So, so like one thing that you had in your back pocket that some people don't is, and I had it in my back pocket was, Hey, I, I don't know that answer, but I have an experienced agent, you know, with me, let me, let me go and ask them. And I was never good at the BSing, like trying to figure my way out, like talk my way through stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I found that out pretty quickly too, right? When you have to make that call and say, hey, by the way, like I told you the wrong information and here's what it really is. That's mm -hmm. when I kind of made that pivot, especially when I was early in my career and, and younger was just being truthful and just saying, hey, like I don't know that, that uh, answer to your question. Let me call my mentor and uh, I'll get back in touch with you. And I think that's really what helped me was because people respected that. Whereas before I thought it would be, oh, well, this guy doesn't know anything about real estate, <laughs> you know, and go the opposite direction of, of losing their trust. Yeah. No, so, I, don't, I don't think anyone should ever be afraid to say, I don't know. I think I don't know is honestly one of the, one a powerful thing to say, like it just, it proves that no, no one likes to know it all and, you know, and nobody knows it all. Right. So it's 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 OK to not know um, as long as you, you know, work to find the answer. Don't just be like, I don't know, and throw your hands up in the air. Right. I mean, work to find that answer. Go to the more experienced agent. Go to somebody that you can ask your manager, your broker, your team lead. Um, definitely. I mean, it's you never want to BS your way through this industry, because when you start doing that, that's when you start getting in trouble. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So I want to go back to the college. Uh, yeah. 19 years old, um, get your license, you're going for marketing, mm -hmm. but really the real estate was to satisfy that sales experience. Yes. Um, kind of walk me through the next couple, couple of years. Um, once you got licensed, did you fall in love with real estate or was it still kind of like, this is just kind of satisfying that one thing. And I want to still focus on getting into the corporate world. Yeah, for sure. So. And that, it was after my first year of college. That was the summer I got that summer. I was one of the first hundred agents in the state of Ohio to get licensed fully online. That was when it first came out. Okay. So I was one of the, like the beta, beta people. I still get um. I don't I don't know if you're familiar with the platform, but you can like comment on videos in it. I still get 
emails and people comment on these videos from the course, like the oh. pre licensing course. <laughs> from no, they didn't have that. They didn't have that option when I got licensed. There was uh -huh. uh, in, in person during the summer. So both days on the weekend from mm -hmm. 830 to 530, whatever it was. And back then there was only about 15 of us in a class. So <laughs> it was fully online. I was one of the first hundred people to complete it. I, I have a little like plaque that they gave me even. I don't know where it's at, but yeah. So I had done that and then I went back to school. It was my second year of college. And I was marketing and I was PR. I had done public re public relations as well as my other degree. And I decided that I was talking to my mentor. He's like, why are you doing public relations? He's like, you want to go in the corporate marketing world? He's like, you should drop that. So I ended up adding an accounting degree, which is eventually what I graduated with was marketing and accounting. But while I was doing that, I mean, really my main goal when I graduated was to go into the corporate world. So I was doing real estate. I was doing a part-time. I'd become quite involved on my campus. Um, I was an honor student and I'd actually become um, the president of the honors program at Capitol. So I was president, I was the first ever um, sophomore president of the honors program. So that wow. was sophomore year. Um, I held that position all the way until graduation. And then um, I started um, working in our student affairs office. So, you know, our student organizations, fraternity, sorority life, um, student government, you know, big campus planning events, stuff like that. And I, like everything was housed out of that office. And I started working there um, my senior year, actually. And in the before I'd actually started there, you know, I was doing real estate more and more. My first year was probably pretty slow. I didn't close too many. You know, I was doing a part time. Yeah. My, I, you know, classes always came first for me too. And, you know, I was really just working with the people that I knew, like, like I know, like, and trust the people that already like knew, like, and trusted me. So, um, and I was trying to overcome that obstacle of being young. So, it's, sorry, with the no, like, and trust, right. Uh -huh. Was it friends, parents, was it internet leads? And I, I'm always curious because, you know, you talk to the younger people in the business and they're like, well, none of my friends are buying homes. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, but they got parents, coworkers, you know, all of that. So kind of how did, uh, how did you start to build your business during that time? Yeah. So like, as you said, all my, my peers were 19 years old. Um, so they weren't, they weren't buying real estate. There was, I think two, I had two like actual people that were my age at the time, like buy something and nobody was selling. Like none of my obviously 19 year old friends were selling real estate. Right. So um, parents were honestly, actually, they were a significant portion of it. Like, cause you know, I had grown up, I was very close with a lot of families back when I went to high school in Grove city. Um, and so some of them was my business, but it was open houses. Honestly, I, I built trust at open houses and, you know, I met people, got to know them. Um, and, you know, did they buy with me immediately? No. I mean, I had to, you know, it's that follow up, follow up, follow up, but open houses really where, where, where I built my business. I'm great at talking. I'm good at connecting with people. Um, I love connecting and talking to people. I loved open houses. I was doing, you know, I was usually doing five to six a month for open houses. So that was really where I did build my business was within that. And, you know, now five years later, those people, you know, are selling now or they're buying another, their second house, or, you know, they're, it's a, that's, and now I'm seeing, you know, the return, the referral business. And I really did build my business off those, you know, first, how many ever people I got through the open houses. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. Cause I think a lot of people struggle with mm -hmm. how do I go out and I attract clients? especially mm -hmm. at the younger age, you know, like sure. four to, and, and you said it four to six a month, right? It's not just doing one and, oh, I tried or, you know, that's good for the month. It's mm -hmm. no, like multiple times in a weekend, you know, multiple opportunities. And then the biggest thing was you actually followed up. Yeah. You know, the no, one I, thing, yeah. The first. one thing for me was internet leads, you know, like that's how I built my business because I didn't have a sphere. I wasn't from here. So yeah. No, I think that's awesome because, you know, part of what I talk about all the time is there's so many different ways that an agent can be successful in this business. And it doesn't have to be you have to be the top listing agent or the top this or top that. I mean, it's find what you're good at. You know, you said like you're good at building relationships and talking to people. Right. So what are those opportunities that you could do mm -hmm. to get in front of people for you to thrive? So yeah, for sure. And open houses were free. That was the other thing. <laughs> 
I was a broke college student. I was paying, you know, 30 K a year in tuition and they were free. Internet leads weren't free. None of that other stuff was free, but I could take my time and, you know, go to an open house and talk to people for two hours. And sometimes I, I wouldn't have anyone come through. Like I'd have open houses where there were zero people. So, you know, I'd work on homework. I'd work on, you know, my group projects. Like one time I even had, I remember we had a huge presentation on Monday and I had my group, like my group, it was me and one other girl. I had her come to my open house with me and we worked on our, my, our group project together. Like I was doing all of that while also doing 21 credit hours a semester to finish both my degrees and working in my student affairs job. So it was a lot, but I mean, I, I made it work. Hard work has never scared me. And it was always something that, you know, it, it was definitely something that helped me in the long run, but they were free. That was the main thing for me. And that was it. I mean, I asked, they weren't always necessarily my listings. I'd ask, you know, other agents in the office. I'd hold my mom's open. You know, I'd hold anyone that would let me have an open house. I'd hold it open. So, yeah, I tell agents all the time, prospect other real estate agents. There's there's agents who have been in the business for years that don't enjoy open houses or they're just too busy to really do them. And they'd be happy to to hand over that opportunity 100%. to someone that is willing to do it. Now, I got to ask, did anyone ever did anyone come through that open house and did you get a client from it? Because I think that would be a great way to stand out. Right. Like. They're like, well, what are you doing? You got like, I don't know, a poster or something set up. And you're like, oh, well, I'm actually still in college and I'm working on a project, but feel free to walk through the house. Let me know what you <laughs> if you have any questions. No, for real. No, I mean, I got a lot of um a lot of clients through open houses back then. I mean, I only did that group project thing one time. It was yeah. a it was a, a certain circumstance that we needed to get it done. I had already promised this agent that, you know, I was gonna do this open house. And I didn't want to let either of them down. I was like, look, like this is my career. I can't give this up. I was like, I want a corporate job one day. Like I can't mess up my sales experience. So yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, talk about a good starting conversation point, right? Like <laughs> someone walks through. So, okay. So um, you're, you're going towards uh, accounting and, and, and marketing and um, kind of the rest of your college career. What did that, what did that look like? And then um, kind of walk us through what happened upon graduation. Yeah, totally. So I had gotten really close to this marketing professor of mine. Um, she had recommended me for a few different internships. So I actually had a, um, I had a few internships throughout college. I was at Children's Hospital for a long, long time doing digital marketing. So website, blog, foundation work, um, search engine op optimization, coding, every anything else you can believe. They were such a, they were an understaffed team. I mean, I was throwing out all kinds of projects at the time, The on our hands or on our sleeves campaign, which I'm not sure if you're familiar with that mm -hmm. from children's it's the children's mental health one. But um, I was actually part of the team that took it from a local reach to a national reach. So I helped. Oh, wow. out. Um, I and obviously I was just a little intern. So I mean, I wasn't you can't take too much credit. But I helped um, code, you know, all the, we had individual state sites for um, mental health resources for each state. So, you know, suicide hotline, um, all kinds of different like outreach programs. So I helped code all of that. So I worked there. I had a few other internships, um, did some student teaching as well. I kind of just, you know, put my hand in everything. I was still running the honors program. So, you know, in charge of all, you know, activities. Uh, my job was basically making sure if a student came in as an honor student that they graduated as an honor student. So, you know, I was had, you know, I was in charge of 120 students at one point and I was meeting with them quarterly, each student at least once quarterly. So twice a semester. And it was a lot. And I was also, you know, I had double degrees. I was the only student at Capitol at the time that had both a marketing major and an accounting major. There were about, it's a small school. There were about 17 accounting students. And probably about 65 marketing students. I was the only one that did both at the time. Um, I actually had them look it up. And I mean, it was less than 25 in the entire history of wow. the program that someone's done both at the school. They're, they're the two largest business degrees that we have. And um, I'd gotten, so anyway, I'd gotten close to this marketing professor and she's like, you know, she's like, you no. she's like, you're not doing real estate. She's like, you're too good at marketing. Like, no, like, no, you're just not doing it. I was like, but I really think I'm starting to like love it. Like, I think it's it's not just the sales experience for me. It's my junior year of college. Like, it's not just the sales experience for me anymore. Like, I really think I want to make it my career. 
And she's like, well, why did you even go to college? I was like, well, you know, and back when this is me as a junior, I was like, the housing market crashes, like, oh, something to fall back on, which I, you know, it's a hot topic right now that people think it's going to happen. It's not. But um, so that was my, my thing was, was like, I, re- I, I think I'm, I'm falling in love with it. And so I was talking with my, talking with her and then I was talking to my boss in the student affairs office. I was working in there, you know, probably 20 to 25 hours a week. And I, you know, was meeting with students then basically my, my job in that office was to, I was doing the honor student thing. And so my job kind of coincided with that, but it was on the entire, entire campus, student life, all the whole student body. And it was to um, get students more involved on campus. So if we had, you know, a student that was not on any student organization roster, they'd have a meeting with me, which you think at every student would at least be in one student organization, but you'd be surprised at like how much they're just not like, you know, they go to class, they go, they go back to their dorm room, you know, they go to class, they, they go to the, the cat, like the cafeteria. <laughs> yeah. So my, <laughs> my job was to get them more involved. I, I love talking to students and, you know, so I, I was doing that. And then I was kind of at this point where I had, given up the, I had done enough internships in the corporate world, I'd done some other companies and corporate life, that I, that dream was no longer mine. It was the end of my junior year, that dream was no longer mine. But I started to follow, I started to really like student affairs. I loved working with students. I still love working with students. I love teaching. I love, you know, being that, like helping, helping people get to that next step, like helping them, you know, achieve their goals, their like the, their next, like the things yeah. they want to achieve. I loved that. And, you know, student affairs was something, you know, that I, it was something that I could do. It wasn't necessarily a, a subject in school. It wasn't like math or science or, you know, anything like that. But it was, you know, it's this, uh, it's the other half of education that is so important to a development of a student or of a person. And it's that, that social aspect that, you know, team building, the organizational aspect, like it's not just, you know, any, anyone can go and do a class and get an A, but you know, not everybody can lead a meeting. Not everybody can, you know, be comfortable in a social setting. Not everybody can, you know, you know, work on a team and, you know, so much of in the student life aspects that that's so important. Some, in some ways it's even more important than, you know, learning. Right. Conjure as the powerhouse of the cell, I think is the example people <laughs> often do this. Yeah. So, I got to my senior year and I was kind of at like, well, what do I do? And then COVID hit. So I was graduating in May of 2020 and COVID hit. It was literally the night of my birthday. My birthday is March 9th and I was turning 22. It was my senior year and me and a couple of friends decided to go out. And when we were out that night, um, campus, like Capitol closed the rest of the week. Like they're like, we don't know what's going on like we're going to cancel classes we'll like meet back up on monday we're just like we're going to disinfect the campus like it, everything's fine and then we never went back like we just never went back to school like it, we went virtual for six weeks and then i graduated and honestly you know if if that if covid didn't happen i don't know if i would honestly be in real estate full-time today student affairs was mm-hmm. honestly something that was picking up you know it, it was picking up speed in my life. I loved it. I always wanted to keep real estate as, you know, a side business, like something yeah. I was probably something I was going to do, but I wasn't necessarily going to, I had, you know, these 25 to 30 clients that were my, you know, I call them platinum people. It's a Floyd Wickman term that I learned and I was always going to keep them, but I was never necessarily going to prospect for new business. Like I was just going to work with, they referred me awesome. You know, if they wanted to sell their house, they had sold them uh, lovely, but and that's necessarily did, wasn't going to look to build my business any further. Sure. And if COVID didn't hit, I, I, I honestly don't even know where I would be now. Maybe I'd be at some university, you know, doing student student affairs, student life. I'm not sure, but it was definitely COVID was it was transforming for me. Was it? Um, well, I wanted to back up, so I wanted to ask this question: How did you manage all of that? <laughs> All of that, because again, you know, like I believe there's things that happen in our earlier life that that will help us all benefit in our real estate business. I can I can't imagine double major, 
all of the other uh, student, you know, activities you were doing, internships, real estate, you know, showings, open houses, all that stuff. Like, how did you even manage all of that and navigate, prioritize? Because I think that's one of the hardest things, even to this day, from even me, mm -hmm. is the time management, activity management, all of that. So, do you have any? Uh, tips or things that helped you during that time, I guess, if you can go back and think about it, that that really helped you or were you just kind of flying by the seat of your pants and <laughs> fitting in each thing where everything went? Yeah, no, totally. Um, I've always had a rule. Um, I never work past 8 p.m. So even That's if I cool. had stuff left over, um, whether it was homework or anything, um, it was 8 p.m. came, I shut my laptop, I was done. So it was, you know, always whether you know I, I then watch i never went to bed and usually about 11 or midnight but um so that was just time where you know i would you know sit and watch a movie or you know go out to the bar with my friends or you know hang out with maybe we just hang out and play a board game and um, that was definitely something that was saved a lot for me and then the other thing was my support system i had all kinds of support um, and I'm not talking, you know, my career necessarily, but, you know, just my friends, um, my mentors, I always had someone that I could go to to talk about something, whether it was personal or, um, you know, a social problem I was having with a friend or, you know, something, you know, I was having an issue with a client, a house. There's always somebody that I could go talk to about it. And, you know, and I had different people for different, you know, I was involved in so many different things, you know, but right. something, you know something that happened with an honor student. Like, you know, I was super close with the director of the program. She was a professor at the university, still really good friends with her. Um, you know, I'd go to her. I mean, there was always these people in my life that, you know, and they're still there for me. And, I, and you know, I, I'm there for them too. It's a two way street as well. And honestly, that, that was honestly what saved me because I was working, I was, you know, I was doing 22 credit hours a semester, which, you know, the, the maximum credit load is 18. So yeah. I was already going four over um, the program. My two programs themselves were going through changes as well. So I was kind of in a transitional period for the marketing and accounting programs. They were both changing, you know, the weights of certain courses. They were getting rid of courses. They were adding courses. And I was constantly being thrown and like, well, you need to take this course now because it's no longer going to be offered after this semester and we're, you need it to graduate. And I was like, and I, I didn't let people push me around was the other thing. Like, I was like, look, no, like we need to fix this. Like there's a solution. Like I can't take this, you know, four hour class from two to 6 PM on a Tuesday. Like that is, that was one of the major times I did real estate work. Like, or that was, you know, I had my internship during that time. I was like, this is the, you know, this is the degree that you promise. This is what we're going to. And so, you know, it was a lot of work. So did I ever have to pay for my extra credit hours? No, I didn't Thank, Thank you to the, provost and the people of capital university they are very understanding absolutely love capital i cannot rave enough about them but um yeah no it, i can't say it was easy it was never easy um did i graduate number one in the business program in 2020 at capital university yes i did um how i did that i honestly i couldn't i mean it was the support of my friends and my colleagues and my coworkers and other agents and everyone and that 8 p.m. thing, honestly, was huge for me. I mean, I just, I quit at 8. And honestly, sometimes I would cry after that, like, because it was hard. Like, I had such a stressful day. I was like, I need to, like, no, like, I need to finish this. But it, I always stopped at 8. Like, I just did. And, is, that still, is that still a rule you hold to, to this day? Um, my life has changed a little bit in the way that my, my day is structured. So not always, but usually, usually I'm done by 8. Yeah. Um, now there may be sometimes, especially with the transition to my new brokerage where I'm like, I'm on a roll, like, let me just get this done. Um, but yeah, other than that, I, I still try to, you know, stop mm -hmm. everything by eight. Um, that's always been important to me. Usually start everything up by eight, like eight to eight is usually my, um, my thing. And now with that being said, I'm, my other thing is I'm not allowed to dilly dally during my day. Like I'm, I don't get on like social media, like don't get on TikTok. Don't get on Instagram unless it's for business. Like I might like, you know, film an Instagram reel or film a TikTok. Sure. Um, but I'm not doing anything like that. That's that's equally as important to me because, you know, I now have promises to other people in my life. Like I'll be done by eight. Like, let's do this. And I don't want, you know, me to be sidetracked or distracted during that time and not fully present. Being present is very big with me. Not being fully present with someone because I didn't work 
as hard as I could that day or I didn't, you know, get the stuff that I had planned on getting done that day. And do things happen? Things happen. Like that's normal. That's life. And people understand that. And I understand that. But sure. having that structure has definitely been something that helps me a lot. Yeah, that's uh, the whole being present thing. I have got a lot better with. I still struggle with it. Um, mm -hmm. But when I when I got in the business, um, I, I always told my clients, like, I'm available nine to nine, Monday through Sunday. Mm -hmm. And there'd be times where, you know, I'd be on a trip with friends or I'd be hanging out with friends or even family like Christmas, Thanksgiving, like I'm on my phone working and I would just always joke like like my mom. And I feel looking back on it now, like I'm in a different spot. Right. But back then I was like, y'all ain't paying my mortgage. Y'all ain't paying my bills like this is how I have to do it. And mm -hmm. but I I was afraid of of telling clients like give me five hours or give me a day or I'm on a trip or whatever. So that's awesome that, um, you know, that's been one of your kind of core values is, is being present, something that I'm, I'm working on even still to this day, mm -hmm. um, just with managing, not, not so much clients anymore, but just managing diff just different agents and teams and things that I'm involved with. It's, it's so hard. And I recently just posted like, uh, my wife, she doesn't work on Fridays and, you know, at one o'clock on Fridays, it becomes, spend time with her, whatever she wants to do. And this past Friday, like I nailed it for the most part, but I had a 4.30 Zoom, right? Mm -hmm. that, I had to, that I had to do. And um, so I, that, I think that's awesome. That that's been kind of one of your core values because I know um, it's just, it's been a struggle for a lot of people in our business. And the fact that you don't <laughs> dilly dally, right? During the day, like I tell people, you know, people get into really into real estate for one of three things. They want to make more money. They want more time or they want more flexibility of their of their schedule or of their life. And, you know, the people that make a lot of money for the most part don't have the time and the flexibility unless they kind of leverage and build a team. Yeah. The people that have more time aren't making more money. <laughs> and the flexibility is the one thing that I think a lot of us, myself included, forget about. Like if you get done with your income producing activities or whatever you have to if, if that's done and over with by one, go enjoy the rest of the day mm -hmm. or take the weekend off or whatever the case may be. Uh, but I think a lot of times because no one tells us what to do and when to do it and how to do it in our business, a lot of people get caught up in the rabbit holes of social media or, hey, I'm going to go to lunch today and it turns into like a three hour <laughs> lunch, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so the fact that you were able to kind of and I, and I, I would guess that's probably because in college you had to juggle so many different things. So you probably didn't really have time for any of that during the day. I'm just, no. I'm just guessing, I'm just assuming, but. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, definitely when I, when I graduated and all I, the only thing I had after I graduated was real estate. I mean, I had my energy and so many other things and I didn't honestly realize how, I mean, I wasn't neglecting my real estate career per se, but I wasn't realizing how more quickly I could propel it. I mean, when I had all this uh, this time for other things now, I was like, oh my word, like I could, you know, be a six figure agent in six months. Like I was, I hadn't made six figures yeah. yet by that point. And it was, uh, it was amazing. And um, I mean, I just, all of that that I had done, you know, I had done so much. I mean, it prepared me, you know, for who I am today and my career and how I've, I've built my business. And when I did all of those things, I was still like the, everybody knew I was, I was a realtor. Like I was the student that was a realtor. I was, I was the, I, and I, I jokingly coined myself as the Capital University realtor because <laughs> large significant portion of my business comes from capital whether it's you know ha old professors of mine or you know friends or you know just people i didn't even really knew like maybe it was an honor student that i had met but they reached out to me and i was like hey like you know i've followed you on instagram since we were in you know sophomore year and I know you're a real estate agent. Like I'm thinking about, you know, possibly buying, like, can you, you know, walk me through it? Like, and, or, you know, past, you know, mentors or bosses referring me to, you know, new other business, like, and I have a, a lot to, you know, I, because I was so involved, it really has helped my real estate career because I built those relationships 
and it, I didn't build it on a, on a, a business foundation. Like right. I, like, I wasn't like, yeah, like I'm an agent. Like, well, can I help you buy or sell a house? Like I was there for other purposes, like, right. I, you know, to help them graduate. I was there to, you know, help them get involved. And you you remember people like that. And I mean, I think my, my fun, one of my funniest stories of a, a deal I closed with something from college was I had met him at the club. I was getting into the Uber and he was getting out of the Uber. And he's like, aren't you Thomas? I didn't, I never didn't know who he was. He's like, aren't you Thomas Hammer? I was like, yeah. He's like, oh, he's like, well, he's like, I'm a, you know, a student at, um, he was a student at my school. I didn't, I didn't know him. And he said, like, I, I'm interested in, you know, buying an investment property. I was like, oh, okay. And I had met with him three days later. We had like, you know, flushed out a plan of how he wanted to build his business. He was completely new to the real estate game. And I mean, I mean, he sold his first listing. I think the first deal we did together was like a year and a half ago now. Yeah. And we've, we've done a few more since, but I think that like, I met him at the club. Like it was, <laughs> we were really switching Ubers. Like it was on Park Street, like, you know, the, the like trashiest of trashiest clubs in <laughs> Ohio. And he was getting out of the Uber and I was getting it. Like it was, we were like switching Ubers. It was the same Uber driver. I was getting in. So I gave him my card. He texted me the next morning. He's like, I love to meet. We met in it, like a university building. And I mean, we just took it from there. And I just, yeah, it was, it was so, it was honestly great. And we still tell that story today. <laughs> that's, that's so funny. And, and I was going to bring up what kind of what you, what you spoke about. And it wasn't by design, but I, the fact that you were so involved in your school and capital, I, I'm sure that is your role, you know, your Rolodex of, of mm -hmm. clients. Right. You know, and it wasn't, that wasn't the goal. That wasn't the intention. Uh, mm -hmm. um, that wasn't what you're trying to do, but yeah, just now, you know, a couple of years later, it's like, yeah, like it was worth all of that time and effort and energy and, and connecting with those people. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, I want to kind of move into um, the present. I want to touch real, real quick on the on the COVID situation. I mean, I know there's been a lot of uh, agents that, because of that, have probably been pushed into real estate. Maybe they were, you know, part time doing real estate, and then they got laid off from their job. And and you know, I, I know an agent who used to be on our team. Like that was that that happened to her, and um, for her. COVID was probably the best thing that could have happened because it forced her to go all in. And she's a, she's an amazing agent today because of it. Um, was it because you, you didn't necessarily have the job opportunities because people were just so uneasy on what, what was going to be happening that you went all in on real estate or was it because, all right, cool. Like, this is a sign, I don't, you know, like what made you at that point after graduation to be like, all right, I'm going all in. Yeah. So I think, could I have gotten a job? Yes. Um, I definitely had the the network and the connections that I could have pulled on to. I had done, you know, five, six, seven internships in college. I had, you know, multiple different, I mean, I could have gotten recommendation letters from so many people, but I had fallen in love with real estate by that point. Um, the student affairs world had kind of, you know, paused and there were some things that happened there where I just, you know, necessarily didn't want to, didn't think I wanted to pursue that forever. And I was like, you know what, I'm just going to give real estate full time a try. And as soon as I did it, I mean, day one, I went into the office and I was like, this is exactly what I want to do. I mean, I don't know. I was like, I don't know why I didn't do this sooner. Um, and I mean, COVID, it was just, it was March through, I mean, I graduated end of April of 2020. And I mean, May, June, July, was just a weird time. Cause I mean, we were allowed to show houses, but like, you know, it was, you know, one at a time, like it's hard to right. get in. A lot of people, you know, weren't even allowing showings. Um, it was definitely a weird time. And a lot of my friends, they didn't have jobs. They didn't have, um, it took them a, a long time because so many places were on hiring freezes. Like no right. one was and no, one, it, it wasn't that, you know, they didn't want to hire them. It was that they weren't allowed to. The world yeah. was such an unknown at that point that, you know, budgets were frozen. Hire, hiring was frozen. Like, everyone's like, we're just going to work from home and just wait this out. And if 
you need a job, sorry, we can't give you one right now. Like we'd love to have you. Yeah. Um, I mean, so I honestly, with experiences that my friends are having, I was like, I'm not even going to try to pursue another job. I was like, I have a great career right here that I love. I knew that I loved. Um, I think the only necessarily thing that was holding me back my senior year was like, maybe I'll get a job that has benefits like insurance and, you know, all that retirement and everything, and then still do real estate. So I have the benefits cause I, I wasn't, I'm not married. I didn't have any of that. And I was like, and then I'll do real estate too. And then I was like, no, like, I'm just gonna, you know, just full all like feed in just real estate. So that's what I did. And I do not regret it whatsoever. I mean, I absolutely love it. So that's awesome. I always ask this question just cause I'm, I always, I'm always curious and I probably know the answer for you, but did you have, when you made the decision, did you have a doubters, supporters? <laughs> um, I definitely, I had a lot of supporters. I would say I had more supporters than doubters. Um, a lot of the people around me had seen me doing it for the, you know, past three, four years. So I definitely had a lot of supporters. Um, did I have some doubters? Did I have, you know, some people who, that um that like i'm just thinking of one person in particular honestly who was a close close friend slash professor of mine who thought i was um like squandering and squishing my potential yes and she was very vocal about that and <laughs> my, excuse me while i open my blinds the yeah all. um, um it's so, yeah, it's so... It was like maybe i should shut the blinds it's so interesting because, um, you know, you go into that like full-time real estate mode and a hundred percent commission. Right. And it's mm -hmm. like, some people just don't understand that the opportunity is there, you know, for, for sure. and, and it, up until this point from your story, like you were, you're, you're someone that would put in the work in, achieve whatever you set out to achieve. Mm -hmm. Like that's what I got from, from your story, you know, during your career and uh, college and, and all of that and everything that you did. I mean, um, yeah. So I'm always just curious about that because I had a, I had a broker one time tell me that I should stick to, I should go and sell insurance instead of real estate because, <laughs> because he didn't like how, you know, I handled the paperwork process or whatnot. <laughs> I was mm -hmm. just like, we all, I'm sure we all have that one. <laughs> that one yeah, I, I remember her saying this professor um that i hope she doesn't listen to this because she's gonna know exactly who it is um that um that houses are going to sell themselves sell themselves in five years that the real estate you know realtor role will be completely obsolete and yeah. that she's like you'll be she's like you'll be back in five years and i'm like okay well we'll see about that and that's never going to happen there's always going to need to be a human element in the real estate industry and you know maybe our job and our role might evolve some but i mean there's there's always going to be a need so yeah and i you know the the doubters you know are what help us keep moving forward right mm -hmm. you know it's in, in some way that is also support or fuel right like mm -hmm. you know so it's not it's not a bad thing it's just you know like my parents they didn't ever tell me uh vocally but i'm sure they were concerned when i went to school for four years graduated and was like hey i'm going right into 100 percent commission base and mm -hmm. you know, like i had some buffer uh because my mentor paid me kind of as this admin uh, but it wasn't necessarily like a ton of money like at the mm -hmm. time it it barely paid the bills, but so I did have some buffer, but I'm always curious because, you know, I think you need both to be honest. I think you need both to, uh, to, to succeed in this business when you first get started. So, um, I know we only got a couple of minutes left and I wanted to, uh, respect your time. So I want to kind of speed up a little bit. So COVID happened, you're going all in real estate, your thing. So that was 2020. So now we're going two years, um, mm -hmm. since then what i want to look into the future now what is what is one thing that you're that you're looking to accomplish in the next year is there a personal business is there something like that big goal that you're looking to really go after in the next 12 months yeah totally so i mean when i graduated it was just it was 
the two of us. So we've grown our team to six. So definitely, you know, growing our, and we've grown our team to six in two years. And we've had, you know, I think we've been, we, we want to, you know, get this all, everything set up now and going before we grow any further. So definitely, you know, growing more is a goal of ours. And then honestly, in the next 12 months, um, I'm exploring a big goal of mine is the Airbnb business. So I think I will be open opening, starting, I'm not sure what the, the terminology is, but starting my first Airbnb next month. So um, that should, we'll, we'll, the rest of the next 12 months are quite dependent on how, you know, the next three months go for sure in this first Airbnb. But yeah. definitely um, the Airbnb business is definitely something that I want to get into. I, I see how lucrative it is. Um, I just see I have the property already. So um, I'm definitely, you know, excited to explore that world. Um, so that's definitely a, my major goal in the next 12 months career wise. That's awesome. Um, when we jump off camera, I'll connect you with someone on on my team that's doing it. Um, I, mean, I think in the last year, I think they I think they're working on like their seventh or eighth property that's out awesome. of state, out of state. So I'm 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 right there with you. That's a end of 2022, sometime 2023 goal mm -hmm. of of ours as well as to get that uh, Airbnb property. Um, my, my mindset's a little like I want to pick a place where I wouldn't mind vacationing to so that way I can utilize mm -hmm. <laughs> utilize it. But, you know, I think it's a it's just a new wave of um, that uh, that investment property and, and real estate. So, no, it's awesome. Um, what's some, what's one thing that you're that you're looking to accomplish in the next five years? What's that big that big goal? Five. It's definitely in the next five. I think I want I. And it, it really does just, I'm not the best planner, I will say. So, I mean, when I, I've set, you know, my five-year plan, my five-year goals, and I've done that for years, and they've always changed. They've always evolved. And I think that's super important to, like, you know, not necessarily hold yourself to, you know, your original five-year plan. Yeah. Um, they had. I remember when we had started college in our, like, freshman seminar, they're like, okay, we're going to make a five-year plan. And is my five-year plan anywhere close to <laughs> what I had written down you know, seven, eight years ago, whenever that was? No, not at all. And um, it's just my five-year plan probably is, you know, if the Airbnb thing goes well, keep expanding that. And then honestly, just keep expanding our team. I don't, I mean, I, I want to stay right where I'm at. Um, Columbus, I love Columbus. I see myself here for a very long time. I um, just bought my second house here. So that's all doing good but um yeah i definitely you know expanding the team and just like exploring how we can you know i i think i want to get more and kind of kind of maybe what is not kind of and more of what you're doing like being a mentor for other agents and like you know and getting back to that one uh, that other passion of mine which is you know like student like helping students and you know obviously agents aren't students but you know just like helping someone get to that next level like helping them you know be able to achieve and like me being a resource for them to help them achieve that goal i think that's definitely something i want to explore and you know i don't think I, I, you do an amazing job at it like you're absolutely awesome maybe i can pick your brain off camera about it at some point um do i foresee myself you know building a major league success? No, not at all. Um, I think I just want, you know, maybe just as a more like, you know, social aspect or something like just kind of positioning myself in the industry as someone, you know, that can be utilized as a mentor. Like I can, and you know, out within my brokerage, within my team, you know, also outside my brokerage, outside my team as well. I mean, it's community over competition. We've been, you know, been talking about that for the past 14 months and I love yeah. that. Um, and I think that's definitely a goal of mine, too, is kind of just um, being able to do that. And a part of that is, you know, managing my time in a way that I can make that a a priority. And I think priority setting is huge. And some of my priorities have I haven't been the best at that, honestly, you know, the past two, three months. Um, but I think kind of just, you know, setting those priorities, you know, I, I've done so many things before and I've been a part of, and now I'm just doing one thing. So I think I'm kind of getting to a point, you know, two years later where, um, I'm kind of starting to like itch to like do a few other projects, like not other careers, not other jobs, but just like, you know, the Airbnb thing, like just right. 
to get into something else that isn't just buying and selling real estate. Like, I love that. I'm always going to be doing that. That's always going to be a number one focus of mine, but kind of, you know, exploring other avenues, you know, and they're, and I'm not saying like all real estate industry related. I'm not saying I'm going to go to dental <laughs> school or something right, right. I need to be a pharmacist, but you know, something like that. So, yeah, no, that's awesome. That's awesome. I, uh, I, I always end with this one, this one question um to, to wrap up and it's if you could give the audience um you know one piece of advice that you wish that you had you know starting out in real estate or even you know to to today mm -hmm. um what would that be i think um it'd be build your network i think building your network and your just relationships and not just your professional network, like your social network, your, I'm not talking about your Instagram page. I'm talking about the actual like real life relationships that you have with people. Um, this thing that we do called life and real estate, it's not fun alone. Um, my circle of friends and family and colleagues has been more beneficial and a positive thing for me than anything else that I can say in my entire in my entire life, honestly. And, you know, finding those people in your corner and just being in other people's corners as well, like being just, you know, have those relationships because, I mean, it's so much more fun and it's uh, easier too, and so much less stressful to do these things together than to do them alone. And I think, you know, the younger you start building those relationships, like I still have friends from when I was four. I mean, one of my closest friends, we've been friends, we met in kindergarten. And I think honestly, just having those people in your life and, you know, time isn't the only thing that builds a relationship. Some of my closest friends I just met two years ago. Some of my closest friends I just met 14 months ago in Clubhouse. Like yeah. it, time it has nothing to do with it. It's like, you know, if you're at a point right now or maybe you don't have somebody in your corner and if you don't, please reach out. I'd love to be in your corner. Um, I mean, it's just, you know, just building those relationships because relationships really are is what's is what is key in in life i mean it's key in the real estate industry but you know it's just such an important part of you know living life as well so definitely you know just build relationships build your network and you know you people if you know if people love you and you love people you know you're always there to support them they'll always be there to support you and i think that's super huge and, you know, that can help you, you know, in, in life and your job and, you know, and personal things. I mean, all kinds of stuff. It's not just, you know, a way to make more money. Like, that's not yeah. the reason you should build your network. If that's the reason you're building it, then you need you need to reevaluate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So definitely that would be mine. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. So um, those that have been watching can see your Instagram handle at the bottom of the screen. Uh, but for those that are maybe listening on a podcast, uh, if they uh, resonated with your story or if they want to reach out to you about buying or selling um, a house or just to just to connect, what is the best way for them to reach out to you? Yeah, feel free to, you know, you can message me on Instagram. It's definitely my most used social platform. So Thomas underscore Hamrick. Um, or you can also send me a text, give me a call, FaceTime me. That's all good too at my phone number. So my phone number is um, 614-558-6577. Um, I'd love to, you know, just chat about anything. I love making new friends. It doesn't even have to be real estate related. If you want to talk about pharmacy, let's talk about <laughs> pharmacy. Like I'm happy to talk about anything and everything. So, I mean, yeah, feel free, you know, send me a text, give me a call, message me on Instagram tag me in a reel like i love it all so yeah, <laughs> yeah and he is a uh, wealth of knowledge and information on the social media platform so um <laughs> definitely hit him up for uh best practices and, and things along those lines but thomas i really i really appreciate you coming on and and really sharing your story um and i, I look forward to continue to uh to build our relationship you know even further and and deeper um as we both kind of you know, keep growing, not just our real estate business, but just in life as well. So I really appreciate your time. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. I loved this. All right. Thank you. See ya.